check uh, with uh, Jenny and Ricardo. Can we see you? Hi. Okay. So, uh, Jenny and Ricardo are important for me for this session because they are both council members of ECOWIS. Okay. So, uh, let me introduce you Tracy. I invited her to attend as a resource person from United States. So uh, Tracy is not uh, associated with ECOLEES, uh, so she's kind of external to what we do. And uh, Davey, our longtime member and uh, current co-president. Hi, Davey. Mm -hmm. We cannot hear you. Uh, very, 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 very low sound coming from you, Davy. So let me see who else is here. Vicenzo, can you hear us? Can we hear you? Can we see you? Leah? It, and it may be that some people are just having uh, you know, the screen on, but they're not really so present or recording, et cetera. Oh, Leah is here. Hi, Leah. Hey, Leah, good to see you again. Glad you're still connected here. We cannot hear you, Leah. My kids are sleeping, so uh, I'm okay. trying to get it quiet. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll be quiet too. <laughs> are you still in Thailand? <clears throat> yeah, I'm still in Thailand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, who else is here? Parveen joining us from? Bangalore, India. Cool. <laughs> have all continents here almost. Uh, Vicenzo, still with us? Still not with us? Okay, we'll wait. Ricardo, do you know Vicenzo? He's probably from Italy. <laughs> we have exchanged a couple of messages, yes. Ah, so you do know him. Okay, great, excellent. Yeah, for the world cleanup. Let's see, is um, Vincenzo uh, in, it, in Sicily? I start losing track of the, all the Vincent and Vincenzo's yeah. that we have in Spain and, and, and Italy. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, you have a huge network around the world, so I guess it's difficult to keep track. <laughs> uh, how is Rakesh doing? I'm not watching that right now, so I'm assuming that nobody here was watching Rakesh. Uh, I assume there will be a few more people showing up. Yep. Uh, okay. When when that is over, we're waiting for Ellen, who is another Ecolis Council member. She will join us. Uh, she was at the plenary a moment ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll say this again later, but uh, you know we are recording already. If you do not want to be uh, on, rec on record visually, you would want to uh, turn your video off. Um, so just to, you have that that choice. Very good. Okay. So Jenny and Ricardo, looks like it's windy uh, over there. <laughs> Very much. This is why we will keep the microphone closed uh, unless necessary. Yes. Yeah, and, and Jenny, she can smoke. <laughs> no, you know, I really don't like to be closed inside when there is the sunshine. And so, open cool. it, as I call it. Okay, and uh, David, you seem to be on some nice, interesting place. Public space. I'm in a university. I've uh, just been at a conference and um, I'm in the cafe, so it's a bit noisy. I don't know if you can hear me at all. Cool, cool. Okay, while we are waiting, maybe, Tracy, you could tell us uh, a little bit about Circle Forward, just uh, briefly. Huh? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Um, so... Circle Forward is a system of governance. We started um, through the doorway of sociocracy, and then um, sociocracy tends to morph, I think, in different contexts, and you have, you have things like holacracy. Well, Circle Forward um, is a way of um, doing collaborative governance. 
Um, and it's really not one system as much as it is a container for helping networks to practice collaborative governance and basically uh, using network um, forms of organizations in very complex spaces. So I think that's why Nanad thought this was a good fit for me to come and join your session. Yeah, and you are based where in the United States? We are in Asheville, North Carolina, which is the mountains, the Appalachian Mountains on the East Coast. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. It seems that uh, the plenary is ended and more so and more people are yeah. showing up. So um, I, will, I will wait uh, a little bit uh, uh, longer uh, to see how many people will join us. We will start in a minute. Obviously, it's uh, quite a lot of us, 27, and we have a limited time, so uh, we will not do introductions, but uh, feel free to present yourself in a sentence or two in a chat if you want. Uh, why not? I'm just curious who's calling from where. I know we have people from Asia, Europe, United States here. So uh, let's just... Uh, Minat? Yes. Let me just say again, I'm going to be hosting. I'm, I'm just holding the space here. Uh, we are recording. If you do not want your image to be uh, seen in future shows of this, you can darken, you can turn your video off. Um, and uh, Nina, are you going to be the principal speaker or there's various people going to speak? Uh, I'm uh, going to do this in a very interactive way, but I'm going to facilitate. Yeah. Okay, because I can spotlight you as the speaker. Maybe I'll just put it on. Um, yeah, you know. I, I guess it's okay if we just uh, handle that uh, ourselves uh, by switching between speaker view and uh, gallery view. Okay, that's your choice. As a facilitator, I normally prefer to see everybody, so uh, I'm not using speaker view. <laughs> yeah. And you cannot see everybody because we have more people than you can see yeah. in one screen. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, okay, looks like we are uh, good to go. Um, and I would like to start by um, explaining first um, technically how we are going to do this. Um, in uh, our way of doing uh, um, virtual meetings, uh, we normally use hand signals, and uh, I guess many of you know that this is quite a popular hand signal. It's called silent applause. If you would like to speak, you can raise your hand like this or like this, or you can use chat. I actually uh, uh, encourage people to use chat as a facilitation tool. So uh, we have uh, chat signals. Uh, that are handy for hand signals like this. Age is one hand, age, age is two hands. But this is not going to be a session where there will be a lot of opportunities for uh, discussion because uh, I had an idea that uh, we may want to try this uh, in a particular format, which is called peer assist. But before I explain peer assist, I would like to um, uh, tell uh, very, very briefly uh, about Ecolis and also to make uh, uh, clear that uh, I'm not the only one uh, representing uh, Ecolis here. We have, uh, I think, four Ecolis Council members here with us. And I would like them to present themselves very, very briefly. So uh, let's start with the uh, youngest, uh, Jenny, uh, Ricardo Dem Jenny, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you, Nina. So my name is Ricardo. I'm uh, 28 years old and I'm living in the community of Artierra in uh, north of Spain. And I work with the Eco Village Network, especially with Italy, but also in Europe and with Ecolise, and I pass to Jenny, here next to me. Hi, so my name is Jenny, I'm the Managing Director of Gen Europe, and I've been in the Council of Ecolise basically since its conception, uh, 2015. Um, I work with uh, sociocracy and different decision-making 
um, tools. I am a facilitator of groups, and I'm also working a lot with the emotional and conflict transformation side, which I think is very necessary and important in a network to keep the connections working well. Okay, uh, over to Ellen Berman in Italy. Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to be here with you. Uh, well, as Neda said, I'm based in Italy. I'm a permaculturist and particularly linked to transition town movements, uh, which I've kind of uh, fostered and, uh, and uh, nurtured since the beginning more, more than 10 years ago. And um, of course, uh, sociocratic practices are... Uh, very much embodied in uh, in our way of doing things, which uh, are part of our action for change. And, uh, thank you so much. And finally, over to Davy Philip in Ireland. Uh, Davy is our co-president. Uh, thanks, Nedad. I'm uh, calling from Ireland. I live in an eco village called Clock Jordan. Uh, we are involved in transition towns, and we teach permaculture. So I'm very interested in uh, community-led and cooperative, cooperative initiatives and therefore very interested in uh, approaches like sociocracy uh, for our governance. And Thank you, Philip. Davy. Um, so I shared uh, in chat uh, a Google document that I invite you all to open. Uh, what is uh, what I put in that document is basically uh, very very briefly uh, what I wanted to share with you as an um, introduction about Ecolis and a challenge and uh, also a format for today's session which uh, I'll try to facilitate uh, in, a f in this uh, peer assist uh, process format. Uh, this group is uh, too big uh, for such a, for such a, um, format, but uh, uh, I suspect there are a lot of uh, experienced people uh, with sociocracy here and with networks and with collaborative organizations. And I wanted to make this session uh, useful in creating value for us in Ecolis. So I'm going to present the challenge and then uh, ask uh, for support. So uh, in terms of uh, the topic for today, um, what I wanted to uh, present as a challenge is how to actually uh, learn about implementing sociocracy in an organization network uh, like uh, Ecolis. And uh, we already are doing it. We already have a history of uh, doing um, all kinds of experiments uh, with the sociocracy. I've, I've created uh, in our shared document a uh, very brief uh, timeline. Uh, basically a year ago, right after our general assembly uh, that was in Luxembourg, I first uh, shared and championed this uh, initiative that we start uh, implementing Ecolis within the council and Ecolis team. Uh, and then uh, there, were, uh, there was a process about uh, discussing about this, uh, making it happen, agreeing how exactly to make it happen. And uh, uh, sometime in uh, October, October, finally agreed to start learning by doing, and then our experiments were mostly limited to a, uh, to a council itself. Yeah? And uh, what happened a uh, few weeks ago is, first, there was an attempt to uh, have a sociocracy introduction training, uh, in-person training, that was not successful for various reasons. And also we had a Ecolis General Assembly uh, where we uh, agreed on a new strategy and also new Ecolis Council was elected. Some people continued, some people that were in law involved over the last two years continued and some new people were elected. What was uh, interesting for me to learn uh, was that uh, among new people that are joined, that have joined the council, 
uh, there were people from organizations uh, within Ecolis that have also experimented with sociocracy and uh, sociocracy 3.0 uh, uh, over the last couple of years. So to move into um, to move uh, into peer assist process in this uh, challenging group of uh, 38 people, um, I would like to first uh, explain the challenge. So. My challenge would be uh, to invite whoever has something to share in terms of uh, advice, resources, or thoughts on uh, how we could actually accelerate learning as an organization and as a network uh, in implementing sociocracy patterns. Uh, does not have to be necessarily uh, S3. S3 is a uh, something I like because it co incorporates Agile and uh, um, uh, incorporates a, a granular pattern approach. Uh, it can be uh, anything useful for uh, what, what we are doing. So, are there any clarifying questions about this uh, challenge from anybody? I don't see any hands. So the challenge is, uh, you could, uh, Matthew, go ahead, speak. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, well, it was just a question of how to respond to you with the best place. And I guess the answer is doing it in text or with hand is fine. Uh, yes, uh, do you have any clarifying question? No. Okay, <laughs> very good. So uh, I will say again, if you want to speak, you can either signal like this, or you can use chat to signal that you would like to speak. The simplest signal is hand, okay? Very good, Tracy, go ahead. Uh, we cannot hear you for some reason. How about now? So, Maybe it would help to know what are some of the obstacles that you're encountering? Why is the learning not accelerating already? Yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, Rakesh spoke about it just uh, a while ago in a plenary. Uh, basically, uh, Ecolis is a primarily volunteer organization and uh, uh, our capacities are quite limited by, by that. And uh, on top of that, as in many activist organizations and groups, people tend to overload themselves with different tasks. So it's always constant challenge how to manage uh, things that uh, require time and attention. Any other clarifying question? Okay, so uh, maybe I would like to explain that when I say accelerated learning, I don't necessarily mean only uh, learning with the faster pace. I also mean uh, learning in a different way, okay? So it's not only about speed when I say accelerated. Whatever brings results uh, sooner. Uh, actually, I'm uh, quite interested in an agile approach, which is about creating value early and often. Okay. I have question. one more question, Anad. Yep. Um, what would it look like to say that you've gotten to where you want to be, that the learning has happened? What would it look like? Uh, for me, as a person that puts Yeah, what exactly... It would mean that we have a, a, a number of simultaneous activities going on in teams or circles uh, that are basically self-organized and uh, uh, creating value early and often. Yeah, that's it. There is a question from uh, Maria Rute Costa, which I know. Hi, Maria. Uh, Maria was supposed to do a training with us uh, in April. Uh, Maria is a sociocracy 3.0 trainer and facilitator from Portugal. 
Are we talking in the context of Ecolis or in general? The, the answer is Ecolis. Yes, we are talking only about Ecolis as a network. Any more questions about uh, the challenge? Okay, if not, let's see uh, what experts uh, willing and able to share their uh, advice, resources, and tips here have to offer. Who would like to start? Tracy, I mean, I'll jump in. <laughs> It's a little nerve-wracking, isn't it, like with all these people on the call. Well. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and you can't, you can't do a round and then people are kind of, you know, invited to speak. Um, well, let me just say that uh, I know when I talked with you about this session, Anad, part of the wanting to accelerate the language, uh, the, the learning is because we're facing catastrophic consequences from climate change and we're being told that we have this like five year window or 12 year window, whatever it is to completely shift on such a transformational level. And what I was hearing is the acceleration is because, oh my gosh, it's like we're up against the wall. And one of the things that I would say is, you know, a lot of people who are involved in these initiatives have been doing things like running meetings for a long time and people bring toolboxes, right? And you already have people who've been very experienced or somewhat experienced in this particular methodology. So I always think like, how much can we um, empower, have a sense of the kind of leadership? Like what are the principles? A lot of people are talking about permaculture, being really clear about the principles being really like our values and principles being really clear about the goal and kind of what the what echo leads what is success in a measurable way for echo leads and then really empowering the kind of leadership and talking about the kind and then letting letting go so one thing with sociocracy is sometimes people say, well, you got to run the meeting a certain way. And I think if we have to run the meeting a certain way, that we're not, we're not going to actually um, be able to do that and have everybody. And we're probably going to get pushback on that. But I think if we set conditions where people know where we're going and there's a sense of a consent based culture around that and a really lots of conversation and reflection on what is really consent and what does that really mean because i've experienced groups who do all of the process tools very correctly and the, con the consent actually isn't really in the room so i'll pause there I'll stop. thank you we do have a, another question clarifying question from john shinner i know john he's a permaculture teacher uh, sorry um Sociocracy teacher also in, involved with the permaculture collab. Um, so how is membership in Ecolis defined and in the various circles in Ecolis? So Ecolis is uh, registered as an international organization, uh, a member organization in uh, Brussels, in Belgium. And uh, it uh, gathers 46 currently 46 member organizations in four categories so it's the membership is uh, defined rather formally uh, and uh, various circles uh, in Ecolis there have been um, there, there, are, there are standard uh, bodies like council uh, executive council uh, team and there have been uh, various uh, various working groups uh, so far uh, does that answer your question, John? Uh, it does. Thank you, Nanad. Um, I, I'm asking the question with regards to the challenge uh, because I find that often how well or poorly a volunteer-based organization defines their membership affects the cohesion 
and the willingness of people, you know, to commit to doing certain work together. That's, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any tips to share with us, John? Well, just if there's, if there's lack of clarity, if people can come and go at will and the, and the group or a given circle doesn't hold the, the practice of membership firmly that can, you know, make it harder to get things done to, to be effective. Uh, what do you mean by practice of membership? Um, if, if I can show up and work or not as I freely choose and there's no consequences, in other words, I'm not asked to make any commitment that I'm held to account for, <clears throat> then you know, then things may be more chaotic or resources may come and go without notice. And, you know, something that someone is expecting me to do will not get done because I haven't made any commitment myself and no one is, uh, there's no sort of peer pressure or other process to hold me to account. So anyway, okay. just, just some thoughts. Clear, thank you. So again, uh, the challenge is how to accelerate learning in an organization or network, uh, because ECHO is, is both, in applying, in applying sociocracy. Deborah, go ahead. Uh, I'm responding to the last comment uh, about volunteer organizations and commitments. Uh, so I'm an organization where, we're, where we have a network of individual members as well as network partners. Um, and we're at the very, very beginning, but some of the things that I'm trying include having uh, like very clear levels of involvement that someone can decide. So we have explorers who are new and they're trying to see, oh, what is this community about? And do I, am I even interested? And then after that, they can become participants. That, that happens very naturally. Do they come to the events or do they engage on our online forum? And after that, we have a way where they can become full, they can choose to become contributors. And as contributors, you can commit time, talent, or treasure. Uh, and then after that is, would you like to become a member in which you have increased trust, but also increased responsibility and governance um, rights? And as a individual member, uh, you can choose where you want to be and there's no pressure whatsoever to sort of like follow that, that journey, you just come in and out, but are very clear around where you are. Excellent. We'll see how that works. Thank you, thank you. So over to Simbria, Kimbria, Badenhausen. Thanks, Renad, it's Kimbria. Kimbria, okay. Thank you. So um, my, it's sort of a clarifying question and a suggestion. Um, one thing that I've discovered working with groups is that Oftentimes people don't grasp the, the idea of consent for themselves in their first circle. And if you can give some attention to that um, in the beginning and teaching people exactly what consent means and, and are, what are they okay with and how to recognize that for themselves, that will often help them grasp the further ideas and concepts in sociocracy. Many people come and they don't really understand what's okay for themselves. So do you have any introduction to that in your process? Yeah, what we have introduced was uh, actually, um, I think we had most practice with uh, consent decision making. Uh, and uh, while we were practicing it, we were using a uh, pattern from sociocracy 3.0, which is uh, quite uh, visual and uh, well explained. And actually, in my experience, all sociocracy 3.0 patterns are very, very useful self-learning uh, tools. Yeah. Uh, over to Matthew Sexton. Hi, uh, I'm not an expert. I've been involved in a couple of community initiations in my town. And so I just have reflections on that. The, the nature of the organization, uh, off, to me, it seems like it really shows up in the meetings. You know, people don't know what it's about really until they come to a meeting and they see materials. And everybody thinks they know how to, you know, we're all, all of us who have been through much of life, uh, we think we know how meetings are supposed to be run. And so we all have different ideas. 
And then so, you know, the, the, the valuable thing, of course, is to have a clearly defined facilitator who's just going to help us do this. And um, a resistance that I've noticed in the community that I've been involved in is people don't like the idea of committing to something like, oh, we're going to do things a certain way. Oh, we have to go real slow before we decide how we're going to do something. So the idea of, of oh, and of somebody trying to run the whole show. Um, so the idea is that my, my thought is to have external facilitators who, they're, and they're not trying to get you to buy into anything. They're just there to make the meeting run better. And if they have good tools to use, like hopefully we might get some from Sociocracy or S3, then the meeting will run well. And people, without, ha without people having to, had to buy into anything, they'll just think, oh, this worked out well. I like these guys. Um, so like my fantasy is for there to be external facilitators who they're not a part of the group. So, so following them does not mean you're agreeing to how the group is going to go. You're just agreeing to try to get things done easily in that first meeting. So external facilitation is not requiring um, a big buy-in by everybody. It just, it works well. So good. Let's, let's come to another meeting. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we have more or less 10 minutes uh, more left, and uh, I would like to move slowly into uh, fourth and fifth uh, step in this process. But before that, uh, is there any other useful tip, advice, or uh, resource to be shared? I have one. Um, yes, Jerry, go ahead. Whether you use external or internal facilitator, that they um, sort of teach as you go to really be uh, transparent about every step of the meeting process so that people are learning why the facilitator is doing each piece as you go through it. And that becomes then part of the learning that the group can absorb. Thanks. Over to Maria, who almost did the course with us. <laughs> Okay, hello. Uh, I get, to me, uh, I guess uh, with this question that you bring, uh, how to accelerate the learning of sociocracy, it also comes uh, another question, which is like, what, uh, what are the symptoms of, uh, of that says to people that participate in Ecolis that, that show that this is not as good as we would like to be? So how can we together find ways of turning the good into great in this process and that people actually feel the need, they, they relate to that need of, of learning together. So I think people owning the, the needs and uh, find ways together, I think it's, it's key to any process. That's what I would mm -hmm. like thank you, thank you. Welcome, thank you. This, this reminds me to um, invitation-based um, leadership, uh, that is being discussed recently in the Agile community. Yeah. Owning the needs. Thank you. Any other tips or advice that might be useful for our context? No hands. I can say one other brief thing, which is, uh, of course, uh, evaluating meetings so that you can really create a continuous learning process from that experience. And that needs to be, people need to practice being honest and not just say, good meeting, good meeting. You know, it has to go a little deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Tracy, go ahead. Uh, we cannot hear you again. Just to say one more thing. I think people learn by doing and by modeling. And so um, in addition to a lot of what people said, which I think was so excellent, um, I think how you hand, how you meaning like the, the team that's holding this initiative, if there is some sort of like leadership team, steering team, catalyst team, whatever like that team is that is kind of holding the, the highest, the strategic direction, how that team handles objections, how that team handles when people are out of their consent and being able to model what a consent-based culture is like in terms of how they listen, 
how they uh, work with that person to adapt um, in order to bring them back within their range of tolerance, I think is uh, that will, people will experience that and they'll start to mirror the culture that you're creating in that circle. So you, sometimes you don't have to always look to the biggest, broadest thing if you get really uh, values focused in that center. Excellent, thank you. So, Balia, go ahead. I would like to offer some other thing about um, yeah, the seven principles of S3. I think they are also a very nice culture to start with. And once people understand what those principles uh, offer, also bear in mind artful participation. It's also a pattern from S3 that uh, also engages people and uh, uh, in a way that they, yeah, we are all responsible on how we create this uh, supportive collaborative environment. And if we bear in mind that, uh, yeah, what is our best contribution all the time with the principles as the guidelines, I think that's also very useful. Excellent. Thank you. So Davy needs to go uh, to catch a train. Any final thoughts from you, Davy? No, um, thank you. I mean, not just for this session, but for this whole um, series of talks and little workshops. I think that's really useful. It's great to see the technology being used. So we don't have to fly one place in the world and come together. So there's a, there's a, I've got a lot more to learn, and I'm just uh, appreciate this uh, this experience. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, to wrap up slowly, uh, the, the last uh, two steps uh, for this uh, process is about uh, me uh, as a person with the challenge, sharing what I've learned. Um, I must to admit that uh, seven principles and artful participation uh, patterns are also my favorite and we did cover it with this uh, council when we were discussing how to uh, introduce um, um, sociocracy into our work. Uh, artful participation was shared but not discussed and uh, seven principles were discussed, that was the difference. Uh, what, what I liked most, and I would like to try it actually, is um, there was uh, this suggestion about a period of uh, previous engagement by potential members. I think that's something that uh, in Ecolis uh, could be experimented with. So this is something I would like to try. And um, uh, Tracy, you mentioned uh, learning by doing and modeling. So I guess uh, being more deliberate and uh, aware about modeling could be a good addition to what we are doing uh, already. Yeah. So uh, thank you all that uh, shared your tips. And in the final few minutes of this uh, session, I would like to check if anybody from the group found anything useful for their work in this uh, session. Anybody? What's the question again, Nena, please? Uh, anybody from the group, uh, regardless if you have assisted with your tips or not, uh, have you found anything useful from this uh, session for your work? Uh, Non-participating facilitator. Matthew, maybe you could explain this. Oh, it's what came up in response to, to my, little, my little comment. Uh, that is that maybe you don't have an external facilitator, but you have somebody within the group who uh, probably has some stakes, but they've agreed they're not going to, I guess they're not going to bring their stakes to it. They're simply going to be there as a, as a neutral party. Mm. Okay. Uh, Jenny, you raise your hand. Yeah, I think, I mean, apart from the different tips that I heard, I mean, I work with sociocracy in different organizations, but it's really fulfilling and really enriching to hear people with experiences 
and also every time someone speaks, you feel that people here have lived and just a, a theory thought. So it's really connects more. Uh, aside from what I might have learned, that I can reuse either in Ecolisa or in the other organization in which I would like to thank people because I got some insight for Ecolisa that we can implement in the council in the next list I will be there. Uh, but it's really personally wise, it, it, it has been enriching. So thank you everyone. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, uh, because we are approaching uh, the end of this session, and I'm staying here for the next session, I will hand it over to Jerry. Okay. You muted. Yeah. We can hear now. Yes, uh, I've put the uh, back the the link back to the timetable in the chat. If you lost it, um, but now is the time for you to wave goodbye and uh, go back to the timetable and see where you want to go next. Uh, Karen Gidnick, who is uh, here on the screen, I can see her is going to be next in this particular room, talking about the implementation of Sociago in Imago. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much for participating. Bye. <clears throat> and they leave and they come. Yeah. And Jerry, I'm just going to organize my screen share here while we have a minute. Okay. And I'm going to stop the recording.